Hi everyone, so today we are going to assemble our muscle biome shield version 0.3. In the kit we will get 1M register, 330R register, 10K register, a 22K register, 1K register, 220K register. In this register after we get 1NF capacitor, 100NF capacitor, 100PF capacitor, a servo header pin. We also get the two tactile switch buttons, red and blue, opto isolator, angled 3 pin, 4 pin and 2 pin after that we get straight pin 2 3 pin 1 4 pin and 1 2 pin connector here we also get the IC socket and IC 6 LEDs 1 headphone jack in capacitor we have 2.2 UF capacitor also 1 UF capacitor and 2 4 70 UF capacitor at the end we also get the shield header pins so now we have seen what we will get in the kit Without further ado, let's get started. So first we have 1M register in our hand. The location on the PCB is R1 and R2. Here we have R1 and R2. Now take the register in one hand and a cutter in the other hand. Carefully cut the extra pins and put them aside from the workstation so they will not fall off here and there. This is how it will look. From the edge of the register, pull the pin inside like a 90 degree angle. This is how it will look and do the same from the other side of the pin also. After this insert it in the location R2. Do the same with the other register also. Turn the pins inside from both sides. Put them in the other location R1. After this. Place your finger on the register like this and turn the PC upside down and pull the pins apart. This will help you to prevent your register from falling from the PCB. Solder your components in the adequate amount of solder. Do not injure yourself. After soldering you can see that there is no gap in the between of the register and the PCB. My tweezer is also not able to enter from it. This is how the proper soldering should be done. After this pull the pins inside and taking the cutter in the other hand. Carefully cut the extra pins from your PCB. Now you can see I have Place my clipper on the base of the PCB and cut the extra pins carefully. It is so neat and clean. Do the same. Now we have 330R register, R13 to R18, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. Align the register like this and cut the extra pins from your clipper. Put the extra pins aside. Do the same from the other side also. As you can see the pins are same from the both side. Now fold the legs inside at 90 degree angle as we did on the 1M register. After this we will put registers in the location. Just to make it look uh, nice. You can uh, align them in the same color coding as you can see here. Place the finger upon them and turn the PCB upside down. Pull the pins apart. As you can see they are not able to fall off. Now carefully solder your components. Take the clipper and cut the extra pins. Now we have cut the pins and this is how it will look. Now we have the 10k register over here. The location are R12, R19 and 20. On the PC we see R19, 20 and R12. Here we are doing the same process. Here we have 22k register. The locations are R6 and R7 on the PCB. 
as we did to the other resistors the same process we will do on the other resistors also here we have 1k resistor the locations are r3 r9 and r10 here we have r9 r10 and r3 now we have 220k resistor the locations are r4 r5 r8 and r11 r8 r5 r11 and r4 now we have to do the same process again the inserting soldering cutting all this process takes time but at the end it will be worth it after this now we will start with the capacitors the smallest of them are 1 nf the location are c4 and c7 on the pcb the pins are already set so you don't have to pull them after inserting the capacitors place your finger up on them and turn the pcb upside down pull the pins apart and now the components will not fall then solder them you can see that there is no gap between the pcb and the capacitor this makes your pcb assembly look clean to identify this capacitor you can see the numbering on it the numbering on it is 102 now we have 100 nf capacitor the locations are c2 c9 and c11 the numbering on the capacitor will be 104 now we'll insert the capacitors and solder them here we have the 100 pf the locations are c3 c5 and c8 c3 c5 and c8 the numbering on the capacitor is 100 now we are doing the same thing again and again inserting and soldering now we have the servo header pin this is used to connect your servo motor to the pcb hold your pcb in your hand insert the servo header pin like this the longer leg should be outside place your finger on the black part and turn the pcb upside down solder only the middle leg of the servo header pin after soldering you can turn it upside down again you can check that the header pin is intact properly if it is not you can resolder the resistor pin and place it in the proper place after you have confirmed the location you can solder the other two pins also now we have the tactile switch red and blue the locations are sw1 and sw2 put the red button on the sw1 location over here and do the same on the blue one to the sw2 here we have the opto isolator the location is u2 you see the notch over here and the notch on the design of the pcb over here remember that you place your opto isolator in the same direction as the notch on the pcb insert your opto isolator like this after this turn your pcb upside down and again solder it now we have the anchor connector the locations are j1 j5 j8 and j9 first we are taking the two pin connector without soldering you can see that the design on the pcb is to be the same as the connector after turning the pcb upside down solder one pin of the two pin connector now you can check that the connector is soldered on the right direction but here it is having problem so you can place a finger gently and press it inside remember that first you have to heat up the solder and after that you have to place your finger and press it inside otherwise the connector will be damaged when you have assured that you have placed your connector properly you can solder it now we are doing the same for the 3 pin and 4 pin here we have completed the angle pin connectors after soldering all that angle connectors you can check thoroughly that the design and the connector on them are placed in the same alignment 
here we have the straight pin connectors location are j3 j4 and j7 first we are taking the two pin for the direction you can check that the cut on the connector over here and the cut on the design of the pcb is to be on the same place the back side is the plain side like you can see here and the front side is having cuts on the design you can see here after doing this place a finger upon it and turn it upside down hold it from a tweezer and place it on your workstation solder one pin of your connector after soldering you can turn it upside down and check that the alignment is properly done or not here we are seeing that it is not aligned properly so to do it properly you can re-solder the first pin that you soldered and twist it to the side that was misaligned now we have soldered the 2 pin the same is the direction for 3 pin and 4 pin the cut mark on the connector and the cut mark on the design should be the same insert the connectors in the PCB now place a finger and turn it ups and down solder only the middle pin of the connector after checking that there is no misalignment you can solder the other pin also now we have the IC socket the location is U1 here you can see the IC socket over here there is a small notch on the top side of the IC socket this is used to check the direction of the IC that is to be inserted in your PCB over here you can see like this the design on the PCB is having a notch on the top side and plane on the other side the same way you have to insert the IC socket the notch side should be the same as the PCB now place it in the direction place your finger upon it turn it upside down hold it from the tweezer because it will fall off now placing on the workstation you can solder the pins now solder only the two pins the top right and the bottom left checking the alignment you can re-solder the pins after the confirmation you can solder the remaining pins also now finally we are on the IC part hold your IC like this place it on the platform press gently on the inner side this is to be done because the IC legs are outside like this it has to be like this to be inserted in the socket from outside to the 90 degree angle before inserting check the notch on the IC and remember to do the same to the other pins also after checking the notch on the IC socket and the IC insert the IC in the socket and press it gently not to damage the pins you can see that the IC has been placed properly the design and the notch on the IC socket the IC and the design on the PCB is the same for removing the IC place your tweezer in between the socket and the IC like this and push it to the end of the IC after inserting the tweezer you can pull apart the IC from the socket and it will not damage the IC socket also and the IC now here we have removed the IC from the socket you can see that no pin has been damaged reinsert the IC in the socket again gently press it inside now we have the LEDs the location are D1 to D6 we have 6 LEDs two red two yellow and two green for inserting you i am telling you the direction and the positive negative the longer leg is the positive and the shorter leg is the negative here you can see like this this is a positive and negative the other way to check the direction is the cut on the led the other side of the led is round and the same is the design here you can see that the design over here is round and the front is cut so the round side is positive and the cut side is negative this is the way the LED has to be inserted you can see that the cut is over here the LED and the design is the same and the cut side is same insert all the LEDs like this and turn it up and down by holding it from the legs solder only one pin after checking you can re-solder and stack it into the right position after you have confirmed you can solder the other remaining pins also 
remove the extra solder from your LED. Now we have inserted the LEDs and soldered them properly. So now we have the headphone audio jack. The location is J2. Here is the J2. Inserted like the diagram on the PCB. Place your finger upon the audio jack. Turn it upside down. Look it carefully and admire the beauty. Solder the single pin of the audio jack. After checking the alignment, you can solder the remaining pins also. Remember, after soldering the remaining pins, check that no pin should be interconnected to each other. Here we have the 2.2 UF capacitor. The location is C1, 1 UF capacitor location C6, and 470 UF capacitor location C10 and C12. Like we did in the LED also, I am going to tell you the direction and the positive negative of the capacitor here. Taking the 470 UF, the negative side is having the black mark and negative mark on the one side of the capacitor and the other side is plain. The black side is the negative and the other side is the positive. The other way to check it is the longer leg is positive and the shorter leg is negative. The same is in the other capacitors also. Here we are seeing one UF capacitor. The longer leg is positive and shorter is negative. On 2.2 UF capacitor is also the same. Now without wasting a time, we are going to assemble it. Be careful to check the mark. Here the negative mark is to be inserted on the white mark of the capacitor designed on the PCB. You can see the white mark over here. This is the negative. Also on the PCB design, there is a positive mark on the plain side. Here you can see that this is negative. In the same way we are going to insert the capacitor. We have inserted both the 470 UF capacitor now. Now we are inserting the 1 UF in the location but here we are doing it wrong. As you can see that the negative mark is on the positive side. So be careful and not, not do the stupid mistakes like me. After checking the placement properly, we have inserted in the right direction. Congratulations for that. Take the 2.2 UF capacitor also. Check the direction properly. Ta -da. Now solder the one pin of the capacitor and check the placement on the PCB is properly done. Now we have the header pins to assemble. Take a Arduino. Insert the pins in the Arduino. Put the longer leg in the Arduino and the shorter leg upside because the shield will be inserted on the shorter legs and the longer legs should be in the Arduino. After this stack your shield on the Arduino and like this the pins will come out of the holes of the shield. Check that the shield has been stacked properly on the Arduino. Now again we are going to solder it. It looks good. As I promised you that at the end it will be worth it. Now slowly we have reached our destination. And congratulations again for that. Here we have assembled the shield like this. I know you are too powerful for this, but do not show the power here. Be gentle with the shield and pull it gently from the top and bottom. By doing this, you will not damage the pins of the shield you have assembled. Now here I am taking a tissue paper so that it will collect all the extra flux that will be separated from the shield by cleaning. I have taken an IPA on the brush, stroke your brush in one direction only, don't do it upside down again and again. You can see the extra flux on the, uh, over here that is caused by the soldering. It may vary to the soldering wire that you are using. Here you can see that the extra flux has been collected on the tissue paper. It also removes all the dust and other materials from your PCB and makes it as clean as new. Now you can see how clean it is. Now we have successfully completed our task of assembling the shield. Hope you found this video informative and if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe and follow for more. Thank you. Bye. Peace.